enough, but hi everybody. We are gonna play Welcome To again. I'm not sure if my head's in the shot, um, but we're gonna play Welcome To again. It is a roll and write game. And so if you look at the link in the description, you should be able to find the print off sheets. Um, go ahead and, I need to get lower. No, no, no. Okay. Hey, so you have to get the uh, print off sheet um, with the sheets you'll be able to uh, mark it up as we go along and as we uh, play the game so um, si tu veux uh, jouer avec nous tu, tu dois uh, emprunter, em, emprunter le petit foie uh, dans la description uh, sur ou um, uh, in uh, dans la vidéo uh, dans la description de la vidéo. Mais uh, aujourd'hui, nous avons joué le jeu Welcome to uh, ton, uh, Your Perfect Home. C'est en anglais, mais je pense que la, la, la personne qui fait le jeu est français. So we have this game in, it is a French and English game. Um, okay, so Welcome to, I'm going to go over briefly how to play. So let me put this back. there okay so we're gonna have this sheet and and we are gonna have different cards that are gonna come up at the same time and so um, this is a roll and write game or a flip and write game and what that means is that kind of like Yahtzee if anybody's familiar with that we are going to have some choices and then you're gonna fill those choices in to here to the neighborhoods. And so in this game, you are just filling in numbers in the neighborhoods or the houses. Now, if you would like to learn how to play in French, um, we do have, uh, si tu veux jouer le, le règle en français et dans la vidéo, uh, de, de, de la description de la vidéo, c'est en uh, vidéo uh, sur YouTube. Um, tu peux uh, uh, Regardez la, cette vidéo et, et comprends uh, uh, comment tu jouer cette jeu. Okay, by everyone else in English, um, I will explain the rules really quick. Um, but anybody in French who needs some clarification, uh, we have that French video as well. Okay, so in this game, we are going to have three stacks. Okay, we're going to have three stacks of 27 cards. And this is more of a sample way of playing. We are going to play this game until we run out of these stacks. Um, normally, you play the game until somebody either can't write something in their thing three times or somebody has collected all three of the special goals. That would be like the normal ending of the game. But since we don't know when everyone else is going to end, or since to make it so that way you can play this after the video has been posted and is not live, um, we will just play through the decks of cards. So basically, we're going to play 27 rounds um, through here, and then the game will be over. And what do the rounds do? And I'm thinking the best way to explain this so just flip these around, show you guys the numbers, and then I'm gonna walk through probably the first couple turns explaining how some of the different things work and filling in filling in my own area. Um, and explaining to you, and then there's, uh, as we go along, there's also goals that you guys can get. I don't know if you can see them, if I put them like yep, that like that. Okay, so here are the goals, um, and we're going to flip over. Uh, the other thing we're going to change is we're going to make them their lower value because um, there's no real ending goal of it. So with the game, as we go along, you're going to be banking different areas, and you're going to be able to get some of these goals. Uh, these are going to make sense once we start just playing 
and understanding how to play. So I wonder, I think I can move these over a little bit more and then I can kind of show you my board as I go along. Okay. So actually, let me, give me one second. There we go. Okay. So in this game, uh, we all play at the same exact time. And the rule is you are going to be filling in numbers. So we're going to flip over these ones to start with. Um, and I'll explain them as I go along. So these are the numbers we're going to be using. Everybody has to pick to either use the 11, the 6, or the 1. And when you use one of these three numbers, you get to also use the thing below it if you choose to. Um, and we'll kind of explain that. This is like the meat of the game right here. So the basic rule to placing is that the houses or the numbers have to go in ascending numerical order. So they have to go, you know, one, then a number higher than one, all the way up to possibly 15. So the lowest number is one, the highest number is 15. There's a few rules that change that and we'll get to that in a little bit. But for the most part, they have to go in some semblance of an ascending order. They do not have to be in numerical order. And what I mean by that is you don't have to have a one and the next one has to be a two. Instead, you could do a one right here. You could do a seven right here. And then you could do eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. So you don't have to go in perfect numerical order. You just have to go in ascending order. You also can build in any of the three neighborhoods as you want. Obviously, the more you fill, the better. Um, at the end of the game, the thing you're probably going to get most of the points are going to be from estates. An estate is represented by houses that have fences in between. So if we put a fence right here, um, there's a fence on all the ends of the houses. Those are there to begin with. But, and at some point, if we fill this in with numbers, this would count as one estate. So that's what these are down here. So at the end of the game, if the game ended right now, I would get one estate that is three. So this estate consists of three houses. And so I would have one, so I'd put a one right here. And then I would get one times the current value that that estate can get me. So in this case, it's a level three estate. That's gonna get me three points times one estate. So I would get three points at the end of the game. Now, if I use this card right here, then I could X off this three. And now at the end of the game, estates that are as big as threes will get me four points at the end of the game instead of just three. And you can continue uh, building those up as you go along. Um, the next thing, so when you get take one of these, if you were to take the 11, you'd place the 11 somewhere and you would check off one. Um, with the biz, if you were to take the six, you could take a biz. And what you would do is you would place, let's say you had a seven here and say you took a six. So you took this six and you place the six here. Maybe that's a six. I'm not sure it's upside down. Okay. So you place a six. I guess I basically just have to make a nine, right? There we go. Okay. So if you had, if you place this six, you could then use this biz. And with the biz, you can put in a anywhere. You, you could do it with a six. You could do it with a seven. You could not do with one of these numbers. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But you could put a business address. And that means that you can go here and you can put a B for a business address of this one. But when you do that, you mark off this box. These are negative points at the end of the game. You will lose points for your lowest point value one. So at the end of the game right now, if the game ended, I would get one negative point because I have used one biz. If I use it again, I'll get three negative points and so on and so forth. But this can help you fill in extra areas. And so like I said, I could have put it on the seven. I could put it on the six because the six is here, but I could not put it on any of these three because they already have a fence blocking them. 
and you cannot put business addresses on other sides of fences and you cannot put fences in between business addresses. Okay, so that's how these three work and the last one up here right now that to choose from is a park. How parks work is wherever you were to place this and so I'm actually gonna use the park for my first turn. So I'll erase everything and this will just be our first turn. So go ahead and pick either an 11 and upgrade one of your estates. Pick a six, and you don't have to use the biz if you don't want to, you could just pick it for the six. At this point in the game, you might not want to take it. Um, or you could take the one. A one is really, really good because it's the lowest you can possibly get. So I'm gonna put a one right here. And since it has a park, I can cross off the park symbol. Now you have to put the park in the neighborhood that you just built the, the house, because essentially that's where the park is. Okay, um, if I were to put the one up here, I'd have to go up here. So you mark off your lowest scoring one in this section. And if you can see on your own sheet, you'll be able to see that this goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 18. So the more you get marked off, the higher score you're going to get at the end of the game. Okay, so that was round one. Hopefully everybody's sort of following along and understanding it. We'll move on to the next round. Again, um, if you haven't started yet, you're just gonna pick either the 11 with the upgrade, a six with a business address, or a one with a park. Now I'm gonna just kinda continue going on, and as we get new symbols, I'll explain them. Okay, so everybody understands how to use these two. They're gonna upgrade your area. The new symbol right now is this construction symbol. Um, what it allows you to do is you can take this nine and you can turn it into a, uh, you can either go up one or two or down one or two. So this nine could become a seven, an eight, it could stay as a nine, it could be a 10 or it could be 11. This is really helpful later on in the game when you have to fit things in. But if you ever take one of these, even if you don't change the uh, symbol, if you leave it as a nine, you mark off this box right here. And the person with the most uh, of these is going to win seven points. Second most is four, third most is one. And so how we'll just play it at this one is we'll benchmark it. Um, if I use any of these, I'll probably just take the four. So if you, is, if you at least get higher than me, you will take a seven. If you get lower than me, you'll take a one. If you get the same score as me, you'll take the four. And that's just how we'll play this one, since I'm the only one um, playing with you guys right now. Okay, so pick one of these numbers and place them out here. I am going to, let me remove my board for a second. Okay, so there we go. I ended up taking the 12. I upgraded my level five uh, estates. I don't have any level five estates. I actually don't have any estates yet. So, um, but it's just kind of the strategy I was going with. You can do whatever you want and you can check off any of those bottom ones if you went for an upgrade. All right, next up we have some things we're familiar with. I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can see better. Okay, so we have a 14 with a park. We have a three with an upgrade. And now we have a six with a fence. Now, I'll quickly explain fences. Um, if you take the six, you can place it anywhere. And then you can place the fence anywhere. Well, following, uh, as far as taking the six, it has to follow the rules. You obviously couldn't put the six on the other side of the 12. Uh, you'd have to put it lower than the 12. And in the same way, you can put lower than a one. You know, it'd have to fit somewhere in the middle. You just kind of guesstimate where you want to put it. But then you can take a fence. What I'm mainly getting at here is if you take the six, you can take a fence and you can put it in any of the three rows. You don't have to put it in the row that you took the six from. So. Okay. So I took the 14 with a park and I put it into this row. But again, we'll slowly start 
drifting apart from each other and you guys will have a different score in the end. So the next round, I'm gonna turn these around. We have a four with a fence. We have a four with a pool. And we have a 10 with a park. So you guys know how to use both of these, but now how to use a pool. The pools work like this. And I think I might actually take the pool just to show you. I put my four here. There is a pool currently in this spot. As long as there's a pool there and there's a pool on the one, now I can circle that I put in this pool. These people asked for a pool, I put it in there. By doing that, now I cross off this box, which means at the end of the game, I will be getting three points for pools. As you put in more pools, you're gonna get more points from them. So that is what I did. So go ahead, choose four, four, or a 10, and there are rewards on the bottom. And then I will move on to the next round. Okay, next one we have a 14 with a pool. We have a three with a park. And we have a seven with a fence. So go ahead, find a spot that works for you to put in whatever it is that you wanna put in. And this is just my example. You do not have to follow mine. And you follow your own way of how you wanna play. And again, these, oh, I should explain these a little bit more. As you get more estates, how these work is, if you were to get four estates that have two, like, uh, you know, two houses, two finished houses, and they are too big, um, and you had four of them, you would get four points. Um, then you would cross off this top bar above them to demonstrate that you can no longer cut them apart and you can't use that for another goal. So you couldn't use any of these twos to unlock this two. Uh, you, this would have to be a different neighborhood. Now this one is two threes and one four. Uh, and this one is a one, a two, and a six. And you are able to get all of them um, if you so choose to. Okay, next we have a one with a fence, we have a seven with a fence, and we have a 14 with a construction. Now, I'm gonna point out this construction since it is on a 14, you can go higher than 15. 15 is the highest numbered card here, but with these constructions, you could go all the way up to a 17 if this was on a 15. But since it's on a 14, you could bring this up to a 16 in case you needed it for some reason. You can also, if this was on a one or a two, you can bring it down to a zero. Um, so if you accidentally put a one on this pool and you needed something here, you could put a zero in. You cannot, however, put in a negative one. Okay. I took the one with a fence, but you can take whatever seems to work for you. We'll just move on to the next round. It'll fairly, it'll just kind of get quicker as we go along and everyone starts understanding how to play it. Um, we have a five with a park, we have a six with a fence, and we have a two with an upgrade. I took the five and I took the park. And we'll go on to the next one. We have a, this is a six. So we have a six with a fence. We have a, this is a nine. We have a nine with a business address. And we have a 15 with a park. And that is the end of what I was going to do. Move on to the next. All right, we have a 15 with an upgrade. We have a three with a biz. And we have a, this is a nine. We have a nine with a park. Right, 
I ended up taking the nine. I put it here. I have now maxed out my parks in this row. So at the end of the game, I'm gonna get 18 points just for this park um, section. But it also means that it's not gonna make very much sense for me to put any parks in this area because I can't cross off anymore. Um, just to point that out. Okay, next row, we have a 13 with an upgrade. We have a 12 with a biz. And we have a seven with a park. All right. Move on to the next one. We have a four with a business address. This is a 10 with a pool. And we have an 11 with a park. I'm gonna walk through just what I did here. I took the four with the business address. So I put the four here and then I affected my nine over here. So I have a nine B um, and then I crossed off this to show that I'm gonna have one negative point at the end of the game, but it just helps me fill in more spaces. Okay, next round we have an eight with a business address. We have another eight with a park and we have a six with a fence. All right, next round, we have a four with a pool, we have an eight with a park, and we have another eight with a park. Uh, we have an 11 with a construction, we have an 8 with a fence, and we have a 9, turn that around, we have a 9 with a park. Round. We have an eight with a park. We have a five with an upgrade. And we have a two with an upgrade. And like I said, we're going to stop the game once we run out of this pile. But if you were to buy this game and have it yourself, you actually, when you run out of the pile, as long as the end of the game hasn't happened, you just shuffle all the cards again and you restart another deck. Or if anybody has completed a goal, they can choose to have all the decks reshuffled. Now we have a whole bunch of upgrades. So we have a nine with an upgrade, a 13 with an upgrade or a 10 with an upgrade. So if you haven't spent any time upgrading an estate, you might want to do that this turn. All right. Go ahead and do the next round. We have a 12 with a pool. We have an eight with a construction and we have a five with a pool. Remember this eight can be a six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. Otherwise the pools are stuck as whatever they say they are. All 
right. Next round, we have an eight with a construction. We have an 11 with a fence. And we have a 12 with an upgrade. If you have this game and you like it, there are a whole bunch of expansions um, for it now. Like there's a Easter expansion, for instance, um, that just came out a little bit ago. And so maybe you we'll play the Easter expansion for Easter Monday. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll do that. So next Monday, we'll play the Easter expansion for Easter Monday. Uh, not sure if you guys can get your hands on the printable copy, but at least you'd be able to we see. Can, we can put a printable on our website. Okay, we'll put a printable of the Easter one on our website so you guys can see it. Now, we have a nine with a business address, a seven with an upgrade, or a, let me turn that around, a 12 with a business address. All right, next, I used my nine with the business address here, and then I added a 12 with the business address. So well, make sure if you do that, you do check this off, so you can gain all of your negative points at the end of the game. All right, I, so we have a seven with a park, a nine with an upgrade, and an 11 with another upgrade. Slide that up there. Um, but yeah, there, there. So we'll play the Easter expansion uh, next week for X next uh, Easter Monday. Um, but there are other expansions too. Um, they're just new, uh, new pads of paper to like use for different things. Um, and so they're all fun to play. I think we played almost. I think we have almost all of them. We play them. This is the basic. It's the easiest to kind of like learn and play. And once you have this down then it makes sense to kind of play some of the other ones when you have time but all right next round we have a four with a pool we have a nine with a fence and we have a six with a park there okay next round we have a five with an upgrade an eight with a construction and a one with a fence All right, next round, almost done. We have a 15 with a park. We have a seven with a construction. And we have a 13 with a fence. Right. We have a six with a fence, a 10 with a park, 
and a 10 with a pool. Six, six, let's see. Uh, if you ever get to a point where you can't play one, um, you will have to mark off this box right here and then you just wait till the next round. If you ever mark off this one where you have the three still visible, that means you're gonna get uh, negative three points at the end of the game. And then if you ever mark off that three, um, then the game is just over. That would end the round. And our hope is that you wouldn't be able to end the round this soon uh, or end the game this soon. But um, just so people are aware, because I can't actually use the tens, but I can use the six. And if you can use a number, you have to use it. Almost to the end. So we have a two, a two with a pool, a three with a fence, and a 13 with an upgrade. Yep, this should be the last round. So, last round is a 10 with a fence, a 5 with a construction, and a 10 with a fence. So once we fill this in, then I'll walk through how end of game scoring works. Um, Of course, it can be replayed after um, we're done with our live stream. It'll come up and you can play with us um, at any point when you're free. Yeah, yeah. because the, these numbers won't change. You'll still be able to just walk through and play whichever numbers came up at the time. And so go ahead, play along with us, even if you're playing along with us at 2 a.m. somewhere. Um, play along. And then at the end, uh, just fill in your score and we'll see kind of who won by the time next week comes around when we play this again. Um, so there's no real rush to having to play. Hmm, I actually can't place any. Okay. All right, that is the end of my turn. So we, if you can place one of these, good for you. If you can't, like me, uh, just go ahead and put an X right there and this is this is going to be the end of the game. So I'm going to move everything else out of the way um, and walk through how to score. I found most games make a lot more sense once you have gotten to score them. I'm going to leave these visible, hopefully, so everyone can still see what those goals are. Actually, I'm moving to the other side. So these are those bonus goals. If you got any, make sure to mark off that you got some and you mark them off here. So this is goal number one. So you would put four points in goal number one. Uh, if you got goal number two, you'd put a seven here. And if you got goal number three, you put a seven there. Now I didn't get any goals. So this is just gonna remain empty for me. Um, so I'm gonna walk through my parks first. For my parks, I've got two points here, four points here. And 18 points here coming to okay so I get two points for my first one I get four for my second and I get 18 for my last one which should come to a total of 24 um, okay uh, next we move on to our construction I actually didn't get any didn't the oh the pool the six. yeah so my pool the lowest uh, number that isn't marked off that I have is a six so I used two pools and I got six points for pools. Now I didn't get any construction symbols, so I'm not gonna take any points for this. So if you at least put in one, take seven. Um, but if you didn't put any like me, you're gonna get zero as well. So you don't get, you can't be in the placing if you didn't use any. Um, next up is my number of neighborhoods. So my neighborhoods that are one big are this one and this one. And so that's two neighborhoods times one is going to give me two points. All right, now the next one is a neighborhood the size of two. I have one and two neighborhoods the size of two. And then two times three is my lowest uh, visible number. I'm going to get six points. And lastly, 
I don't think I have anything for a neighborhood of three or four, so we'll just skip those. But then I have a neighborhood of five right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. So I have one, two, three, four neighborhoods of five. And then four times 10 is gonna get me 40 points for those neighborhoods. Now I don't have any neighborhoods of six, so we'll move on. I do get three negative points for here. Um, that won't get any negative points because I didn't have that many. And then we just add our scores together. So what, that's 30, eight, 38, uh, 78 minus three. So what is that? 75? No, doing my math wrong now. 78 minus three is, yeah, 75. Okay, and you just type in your total number here. So 75 is my ending score. So if you play along with us, go ahead and just play card by card, filling everything in. And at the end, just leave your score in the comments and we'll see who won in the end. Again, uh, with this one is the only one that really matters to everybody. If you at least have used one of them, you are gonna get seven points for it. So that's how that one will work. All right, other than that, uh, tomorrow we're gonna try to play Similo again. Uh, it'll be Similo Fables. Uh, for anybody who wants to tune in and play with us with Similo Fables. Um, to go down low again. Um, so tomorrow will be Similo Fables. And so if you enjoy playing Similo before, or if you want to even just see what Similo is kind of like, we tend to play it as a family anyway. Um, but if you play with us, we'll take your comments into consideration as to uh, which cards to remove as we play along. Um, other than that, I hope everyone has a good rest of their Monday. Uh, it's a sunny, nice day here. Um, hope it is where you are.